Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the Golden Opportunities Coaching and Pro Wrestling Logic YouTube YouTube channels and uh, ultimately uh, we are in the middle of August in the 1984 year of World Class Championship Wrestling. Uh, August 11th, 1984 is our next foray into an episode and uh, uh, that is pretty well a reasonable episode you know it's interesting because as we go through and we've got uh, all um, of the 82 and 83 years it's going to be sad when we get to like a, in the end of 86 because 87 and 88 from what I've heard I have not seen them all the way through but from what I've heard not particularly the best matches uh, or the best years for world class obviously a dying promotion not putting out its best work but um uh, so it's going to be interesting to go there. We will have that and other territories as well uh, in the weeks and months to come. So stay with us here. Right but as far as the uh, um, as far as the August 11th version of the 1984, uh, basically we've got uh, four segments here in this particular uh, episode, and a lot of, I guess I would say, newer talent or talent that uh, is a little understated. Uh, George Weingroff and the Missing Link opens us up after uh, after the open of the show. Well, Link has been kind of a interesting misnomer here in World Class. I would not say that he has done exceptionally well, but he has been under the tutelage of uh, Skandar Akbar for several months now. Uh, Link is a guy who doesn't do an abundance of selling, but his exaggerated movements uh, make the baby faces look strong by default. Uh, Akbar on the outside and very impressed with every offensive maneuver the Link makes, the majority of which are headbutts, as the Link uses his head as a offensive weapon a good bit of the time um whether it's from the top rope from a uh, leaping area link actually does the diving headbutt splash combination quite well and uh disposes of Weingroff in about three minutes uh the pretty young things versus mike reed and buck zoomhoff up next of course the pretty young things norvell austin and coco where coco most notably known for Memphis and then later a, a good run in the WWF, but uh, uh, here kind of trying to find his way. Um, Zoomhoff, uh, stand out in the AWA, having a several month run in Texas. I will say that um, Zoomhoff here is a guy who brings a lot of energy to his matches, per se. Um, the pretty young things are at least pushed for a little bit. I don't know that I would say pushed hard. Uh, not like they're going to take a Von Erich's type position, but uh, needless to say, uh, hip lock takeovers and tip offs and that from from Zoomhoff, uh, they actually do cut the pretty young things off pretty well. Uh, Zoomhoff is more of the shining star in the in the team which you know doesn't make me happy with what I know of him as a person but that's that's irrespective he is wrestling quite well here uh the pretty young things do have problems per se with uh power maneuvers and uh that persists quite a bit uh when the Pretty Young Things are able to get the match going in their direction, it's because they cut off the ring on Mike Reed. Reed, obviously the weaker member of the team. Uh, and they do a series of pretty persistent tags. Uh, you're not going to see, you know, the Pretty Young Things do a lot of, I guess, a, I would say, independent, uh, uh, successful individual stuff but uh, even uh, there's a point where the the pretty young things are run together by opponents and they do the bell ringing thing by zoom off and kind of a clunky match I will 
say that uh, Zumhoff is a guy who does bring, as mentioned, high energy into things uh, very, very consistently. And when Reed is in the ring, the Pretty Young Things have the advantage. I'd say when Zumhoff in the ring, uh, the Pretty Young Things are um, less than successful. Uh, the match does break down into a four-way brawl mid-ring, and um, Reed does get tied up and taken. Uh, you know, bear hug, which doesn't exactly strike me as a huge move, but then there's a, a top rope shoulder tackle out of nowhere by one half of the pretty young things. They get the victory. Then we move on to... Buddy Roberts and Chief J. Strongbow. Weird combination, but it happens nonetheless. Um, Strongbow, obviously, your baby face. And Buddy Roberts, your heel. I think they're trying to... Or Chief Jules Strongbow, I'm sorry. Chief J. Still in the, is still, I believe, in the WWF at this point. Jules and J. A bit different. I've actually, I was actually on an event with them in the, uh, the Strongbows, that is, in the late 90s, so... Uh, just an interesting, interesting deal there. But uh, um, Mr. Roberts uh, bails to the outside and uh, does a lot of backpedaling. He, that's where he spends the majority of the match, actually, is uh, kind of that backpedaling mentality. And it's clear that you've got uh, Strongbow trying to use chops and and other uh, very basic maneuvers to get things going his way. He tries for a rowboat-style armbar and then manages to catch Roberts off guard a few times. Not that it's a huge surprise. It is not. But it is what it is as far as... They break the match down really simply. Uh, you know... Um, very clear to find heel and babyface roles as uh, Roberts is hooking in chin locks and cheating at every opportunity. Um, Strongbow for 1984 standards trying to bring the flash a bit. And uh, match actually goes longer than average. Buddy Roberts usually uh, in world class, the, the bit of the heater, taking the fall for the Freebirds, but here, allowed to shine a little bit, uh, actually gets caught in the ropes for a little while, referee having some difficulty getting him free, but um, then when he finally does get free, hits a few forearms and uh, uses the, I guess you'd say, uh, rope across the throat style trick, and... Then we move to uh, the victory for uh, Strongbow, who, um, you know, fights quite a while to get there from here, but uh, does gain the victory before closing out that week for himself. Longer match than normal. Again, I think they're trying to get him over for some sort of elongated push, but... Uh, Referee makes the call that uh, there is a there is a three count, but uh, depending on your angle after the chop by uh, by Strongbow, you could contend that uh, Robert had his foot on the bottom rope. The American Championship, Mike Von Erich and Gino Hernandez up next. Just seems a little odd. I mean, just think about it. Less than even a year before, David probably would have been in that spot. David Von Erich and Gino Hernandez might have been, well, definitely would have been. Much better match, but uh, Mike manages to do what he can. He sends Gino up into the lights and with a backdrop, drop kicks and the like. Gino heads to the outside and uh, certainly proves why he is, in fact, a, uh, a I guess you'd say, an America's champion heavyweight champion style guy um he's had that belt on and off since coming in in may and uh carrying it rather well it's interesting though how there's heel territories baby face territories uh i would say if the von erics don't have it chances are a heel has it when it comes to belts in the world class area 
of course, always comes back to the Von Erichs, and uh, it is what it is as far as that's concerned. For better or worse, the crowd was used to having them as your champions, and that uh, does not end. Vertical suplex by Hernandez was very well done, and he actually cheers for himself. Um, he hits another one of those and kind of is a guy who doesn't like to waste any motion, goes up to the top rope and is going to come back, come off with a diving uh, back elbow, but he wants to get a victory in any way necessary, but gets rolled up, and in a surprise, Mike Von Erich is your new America's champion as we close the August 11th, 1984 edition of World Class. We'll be back with more right after this.